Welcome back. Colson Whitehead's Pulitzer Prize winning novel, The Underground Railroad, is now a drama series that will premiere this Friday on Amazon. Directed by Barry Jenkins, the 10-part series portrays the story of Cora, an enslaved teenage girl who escapes from a Georgia plantation. With a touch of alternate history, the Underground Railroad is a literal train, secretly transporting people who have escaped enslavement. Where do they go? The ones that run away and never return. There is nothing here but suffering. Pain and suffering. It is time to go. And joining me now is the Academy Award winner, the legendary filmmaker and screenwriter, Barry Jenkins. Welcome to the show, my brother. First of all, I got to tell you, and I told you this offline, but I want everybody to know, Moonlight is my top five movies of all time. I'm talking about all time, all time. Not this decade, not this, all time, all time, man. And it's an honor to have you on the show. I, I, I'm in such awe of your, of your incredible gifts, man. Uh, let's talk about the genesis of the Underground Railroad. How did the project come to you? Um, I've been a fan of one, appreciate it, man. Uh, much respect. Um, I've been a fan of Coastal Whitehead's uh, since his first novel, The Intuitionist. And growing up as a kid, the first time I heard the words Underground Railroad, I must have been in the first or second grade. It was probably during Black History Month. But, uh, you know, my granddad was a longshoreman. He put on his hard hat, his steel toe boots, and his tool belt and go to work every day. And I imagined men like him uh, building tunnels and trains underground. Mm. And so, it always uh, stayed with me. It gave me a really wonderful feeling. It made me feel very full and whole. Um, and when I heard about Colson's book right away, I thought, okay, cool. I think this is something I can explore. Because I always knew I wanted to use my voice to honor my ancestors in some way. Wow, man. I, I think about the book, and I, like you, I'm a, I'm a fan of the book. Um, but there's this tension when you adapt a very well-written and extremely popular work to screen. Now you're obviously, whether it's adapting Beale Street or Moonlight or whatever, you know how to do this, but talk to me about the process of trying to take a great work of fiction and bring it to the screen. Yeah, I think the first part for me is always, if I read it and I can see it, then I feel like it's something I should chase. And I'm always trying to look for, or what is the thing that's read that I think will be elevated or more immersive uh, by being seen? You know, they say show versus tell. In a book, you read a book, everything's told. In a film, theoretically, everything's shown. Um, and so for me, it's almost like um, like an excavation or a treasure hunt. Um, and the fact that, you know, Colson Whitehead is a two-time Pulitzer prize winner, um, you know, you're working from the best, you know, it was almost like you were a chef in the kitchen and you got nothing but the best ingredients. And so that's how I've always approached it. And certainly how I approach this one. And, and do you ever feel constrained by the text? You know, I mean, I, I think about, I remember watching uh, earlier this year, people, or earlier last year, people talking about Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And some people didn't know that it was, mm -hmm. that it was, it was there, there was a previous text. And they're like, well, why he didn't go there? Mm -hmm. Or they should have been more focused on these guys. They should have focused more on this character and not that character. And we're like, fam, this, this thing's already been made, right? It, do you ever feel locked yeah. in by the text in a way where you can't go where creatively you'd like to? You know, I, I don't now, you know, I, I'll be honest, in the last film on Bill Street, I did, because I didn't have Mr. Baldwin as a resource to call, you know, and sort of like bounce some things off of him. Mm. I could do that with Colson. Um, but in this process, you know, for example, you know, in the, the last few chapters of the book, Cora arrives at, you know, this black utopia, the Valentine Farm. And in my research about Indiana, I realized it was the site of the first commercial vineyard in the United States. We started by a Swiss man who actually left Kentucky because he didn't believe in the institution of slavery. And so I thought, oh, there probably were freedmen working on this man's vineyard. Boom, I'm going to make Indiana into a vineyard. I think that not seeing that as a limitation, but seeing it as an opening, an opportunity to explore some things that likely did happen. Um, that's kind of how I approach this one. And I don't know, it's kind of dope, man. Once you like set that positive that positive energy on something, you know, every closed door, you just turn around and you go towards an open one. I want to ask you a question. There's a picture of you where you're in a cotton field uh, with the production team. Uh, I, I just wondered when I saw this, like, what was going through his mind at that moment? I don't even know if you remember this, but if you do, what was going through your mind at that moment? And also, of course, you know, no spoilers since, you know, we still got a couple more days before the yeah. premiere. No, no, I do remember exactly what was going through my mind. It, it was, uh, it was just bitterness and anger. You know, I reached down and I grabbed uh, some of the cotton and I, I said to, you know, the cinematographers, one of my best friends, 
I said so much pain and suffering over over this. And I thought about, you know, I could I didn't make a lot, I haven't made a lot of money, but I had made enough money. I could have bought that cotton field just burning to the ground. And I debated whether or not that was more impactful <laughs> than creating art um, in that field. But um, we released this piece yesterday called um, The Gaze. And it's just about, as we were making the show, trying to capture this embodiment of my ancestors. And there's a sequence from that cotton field that we put into The Gaze. And something went through my mind where we had to start very early in the day, so we'd always see the sunrise. And between the fall and winter solstice, the sun rises in the east, yes, but it rises at a point further south. And so I thought if you were standing in this field every morning and you look towards the sun, you might be looking at home. Uh, yeah, that's the image of it right there. And, uh, and, some, and just finding moments like that where I could contextualize and identify with my ancestors, it kind of like, it, it buffered me against these more bitter feelings because I was there to do a job, which was to honor them. There's a way that you shoot black people, black skin, black bodies, um, that I've just never seen before. Uh, Bill Street is absolutely stunning. Moonlight for me, again, is is a, is really one of those once in a generation films, and it's not just because of the daring script. It's not just because of how you push the boundaries of what we think we're supposed to talk about and deal with, and it's not just because of how you sort of construct love, right? Which I think is amazing. It's a love story, but. Mm -hmm. We look so damn beautiful on camera with you. How <laughs> much of a preoccupation has that been throughout your artistic career? It's, it's a big preoccupation, man. Part of it's when I first got into this, um, the film school I went to, we shot everything on film. My subjects were primarily uh, black folks and people of color, but I didn't know how to work the camera. And so they always were reflected in a way that didn't match my memory of them. And so a lot of times I'm working from this memory, you know, I grew up in an exclusively black community um, and there was beauty and there was joy and people look damn good. And so I'm always trying to push uh, the format of what we're doing with my cinematographer and our color correction artists and going, you know, we have to prioritize uh, folks' skin. We have to prioritize folks', folks as essence because my memory of it can't be portrayed in the pursuit of this art. Um, and I will say too, growing up, you know, before I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker, uh, Spike Lee was working with a cinematographer named uh, Malik uh, Malik Saeed. Uh, he shot Belly, he shot Clockers, and uh, he was one of the first people I saw who reflected black skin on camera the way I remembered it growing up in Miami, which is a hot, sticky place full of nothing but black beauty. Wow. Well, nothing but black beauty is the perfect description of your work, uh, your body of work, and this new wonderful project, Underground Railroad. Barry, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, we wish you nothing but success, uh, and that Underground Railroad is, it gives you all the success that you deserve, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you, man. You, uh, you, take, uh, you have a way of looking at things, man, that is refreshing, because um, you, you're all about context, and I appreciate you step in some places where other folks won't step. So much respect to you, man. Keep up the good work. Love you, brother.